Well, looks like we can put some trade rumors to bed for a particular player that may or may not have been linked to the Minnesota Wild. Plus, a look at the daunting road trip that starts tomorrow, all today on Locked on Wild. You're Locked on Wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello and welcome to another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast. Part of the Locked On Sports Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks, as always, for making Lockdown Wild your first listen each and every day. Just a reminder, you can find Lockdown Wild on your favorite podcast platforms absolutely free of charge. On today's episode of Lockdown Wild, Alex Micheletti joins us as we take a look at some of the recent trade rumors for the Minnesota Wild. We'll set the record straight. We'll talk about an interesting nugget in that the Wild and Matt Boldy are making some uh, initial progress on an extension. And, of course, we'll look at the daunting road trip that gets going tomorrow. My name is Seth Topal, your daily Minnesota Wild insider, joined, as always, on a victory Micheletti Monday, although one that I think a lot of Minnesota fans are stinging a little bit as for what happened yesterday with the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, Alex Micheletti joins us. and Alex, the Wild got a win over the weekend, but uh, I think – the state of Minnesota was looking for another team to uh, come away with a win yesterday, but that's just how it goes sometimes is we didn't get the one we wanted. Yeah. It's a heartbreak uh, all across the state of Minnesota. Um, you know, a heck of a season for the Vikings, but uh, you know, now it's time for everybody to jump on the wild uh, train. Um, so we're, we're here for it. Um, and uh, like you said, um, got a heck of a road trip coming up um and thank goodness they got the two points against the <laughs> coyotes that's a team that's lost eight in a row they're diseased uh they're they're <laughs> they're throwing themselves in the connor bedard uh, race thoroughly um and yeah just good to get the get the two points and uh time to head on the bird and uh on this road trip you know it's funny too because uh, i think there are a lot of fans who look at that arizona game and think Boy, that was uh, that was a struggle. And you look at what happened um, in just kind of a, an odd game against the New York Islanders as well. A couple mm-hmm. of games that were were tricky, but ones that you would have liked to see the Wild handle business in a little more than they did. But ultimately, I feel better about it considering the score of the game that the Jets played against Arizona last night in which – the Jets only beat the Arizona Coyotes by a score of two to one. So misery loves close games against a team that you probably should be able to put away. So I guess I feel a little better about it than I did uh, when the game happened. Yeah, those are the two most frustrating uh, teams to play against in the NHL. Uh, the Islanders uh, are so defensive. And when they get a lead, they're tough to beat because they just go into a shell and they just – make make the hockey so boring to watch um but the wild came through at the end there um that was that was huge uh, to come from uh behind um and then you know this Arizona team you know it looks like they're tanking uh but they're still a frustrating team to play against cuz they also uh like to make things boring and uh you know just capitalize on one turnover to uh you know to you know give them the victory <laughs> so uh yeah and uh, that Ingram goalie has given fits to the uh, Wild in the past. Uh, I remember his first NHL start, he was with Nashville, and he won against the Wild at the X. So, um, yeah, so good good to get just, you know, they're on a two-game winning streak um, and have good vibes uh, going into this road trip. Yeah, and that would have been dicey going into this road trip uh, on a five-game losing streak or losing four out of five. and. Yeah. It's one thing to maybe slip by in an offensive fashion, but you got to look at the fact that both Philip Gustafson and Marc-Andre Fleury 
handled business to the point that it didn't matter if the offense struggled or that it took them a while to kind of get going. Both goalies were on their game, and whether it's the Arizona Coyotes, whether it's the New York Islanders, whether it's whoever else, those guys just continue to both play very well despite everything else kind of going on in front of them in the lineup. Yeah, I mean, Gustafson led in that soft one against the Islanders, and it all could have gone, you know, crumbling, but he stuck with it, and he kept the team in it uh, right till the end, um, and then they capitalized in the third period late. Um, so that's a, that's a huge win on the road <laughs> in New York, um, especially after that tough one against uh, the Rangers. Um, and then Flurry, um, you know, held held Arizona to one goal, um, and after that goal they gave up to Kraus, he, he you know, shut down the door, and uh, it's too bad Kirill's goal got called back for uh, goal 100, but I'm sure we'll see it uh, very, very soon here. Yeah, I, I would think even it'll happen against Washington with the fact that uh, it'll be Kirill Kaprizov versus Alex Ovechkin, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. But um, yeah, it's just it, as much as we would like to see the Wild go out and dominate on a nightly basis, would love to see it. The NHL has been... Very weird so far this season. You have teams that should be really good that are not this year. Teams kind of making things difficult for themselves. I mean, Colorado, all this talk of us seeing them get back to where we had expected them to be at the beginning of the year. And then they go and they lose to Chicago. And you've got people that cover that team calling that their rock bottom this season. So it, it just, I think it's important to kind of take the results of these games and yes, recap them as they happen, but also just consider we're having a weird season throughout the NHL as a whole this year. Yeah. Who would have ever thought the Winnipeg Jets and the Dallas Stars would be near the top there? Um, yeah. It's, it's crazy. You know, like you mentioned, Colorado. Then they end up, I think, beating Ottawa seven to nothing <laughs> the next game. You know, they were taking it out on them after losing to Chicago. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it just goes to show you too uh, how hard it is. You know, to after you win a Stanley Cup to come back. Um, you know, they lose a guy like Nazem Kadri, who is, was so important to that team, and he goes to Cal- uh, Calgary just because they couldn't afford to to keep him. And so that that team is scrapping to try try to make a, a playoff spot. It'll be interesting to see when they get Landeskog back too, because I think they miss him so much. Um, just without your captain, it you know things just seem to be herky jerky, and you know um, that super line with with him, Ratton and McKinnon, just just unbelievable. So yeah, um, the Wild just have to keep <laughs> keep going. Um, you know it's a it's a roller coaster. Um, we've seen it where they've gone on long losing streaks, but then the Wild have gone on long winning streaks too. So this road trip is going to be a real huge test. Uh, They're playing some amazing teams out east. So we'll see if they're up to the challenge. The goalies have been the MVPs of the team for sure. Yeah, and that is the thing I think that kind of separates last year's team from this year's team is that, yeah, it's it's nice to have a lineup that's clicking on all cylinders, but – the goalie play we saw last year, very up and down until the end of the season when Talbot got on his run. You get Flurry too. The, this year's goalies have been way more consistent than last year's were. So I think that will help as the lineup kind of tries to get things figured out. And so we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. But it is interesting. We have had a couple of shows over the last few weeks talking trades specifically. We got a little clarity as to the uh, trade picture for this Minnesota Wild team. Plus, it sounds like Matt Boldy and the Wild have started to discuss a contract extension, which is also wonderful. So we'll talk about that. We also will discuss at the end of the show today the upcoming road trip for the Minnesota Wild. So plenty to get to. As we continue today's episode of Locked on Wild after this. Today's episode of Locked on Wild is brought to you by Athletic Greens. I have used AG1 and started to use it every day. 
because it helps simplify your vitamin and supplement routine. All it takes is one delicious scoop of AG1 and you are absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging. Plus, it's lifestyle friendly. Whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free, AG1 is a small micro habit with big benefits. It's one thing you can do every single day to take great care of yourself. And it is proven effective. Athletic Greens has over 7,000 five-star reviews. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every single day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Continuing today's episode of Locked on Wild, once again, thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. For your second listen, make sure you check out the Locked on NHL podcast to get the full lowdown on everything going on throughout the National Hockey League. Locked on NHL is available on your favorite podcast platforms absolutely free of charge. Taking a look at some of the latest trade buzz for the Minnesota Wilds. Uh, Alex, we got the definitive word, the definitive source. Michael Russo uh, putting to bed some of the Jacob Chikrin rumors that we had uh, a little bit of fun with last week. Uh, Zach came on to uh, discuss. And yes, it would be fun to try to make a trade like that work. But ultimately, Russo saying, there's no interest. And so that dream that we had tried to kind of kindle uh, here on the show has uh, officially died. Yeah, it's too bad. I mean, he's a heck of a player. I mean, he's a game changer. Um, you know, he's a top power play guy, um, lethal shot, uh, very cheap contract for the next couple of seasons. Um, so, yeah, it would have been nice. And he's uh, he was best buddies with uh, Brandon Duhame growing up there in Florida. Um, so that would have been been nice to reunite with uh, with them. I tweeted out that picture of <laughs> of them when they were kids with Sidney Crosby. It's just, just amazing that, you know, you know, you take a look at Crosby, he's still playing and these guys are just a couple of years into their uh, NHL careers. So that was, that was fascinating. Um, but uh, yeah, it's too bad. Um, you know, the Matt, uh, Matt Dumba rumors are starting to swirl big time too. Uh, we've heard that uh, uh, the Ottawa senators and uh, the Edmonton Oilers are interested in Matt Dumba. Um, so yeah, it'll be be interesting to see if uh, um, if one of those teams does try to ultimately pull off that move. Yeah, and and the the Dumba thing, we got a little more confirmation on that from Bill Guerin himself. Uh, in that, while and th- this is something that we this isn't breaking news mm-hmm. that the Wild are not going to trade Dumba just for the sake of trading. trading. It's going to be. If there is a move that they can make that makes sense for them to continue this push to the playoffs that they're on while also trading Matt Dumba, they're going to go that route, which leads me to believe if they do anything on the Dumba trade front, which I still think that that is likely to happen, it's going to be for a younger defenseman who comes back in return to try to move a little salary maybe on a lateral move for somebody else. But I think ultimately the return for Matt Dumba will be for a younger defenseman that can come in and can still play a role on this team as they push towards the playoffs. Yeah. I mean, well, you have Brock Faber ready to go too. Um, So we'll see, um, you know, how long uh, the gopher hockey team, how long their run lasts. Um, You know, if they make it to the frozen four, it's going to be, 
quite a ways away. Um, but uh, yeah, he's he's ready to go. Um, obviously, this team still needs a center. Um, so uh, if they can get any type of center back, uh, I'm I'm all for it in any type of trade. Um, yeah, we'll see the, you know, I tweeted it out too that, uh, you know, you have to admire Bill Guerin. I mean, he always goes for it. Um, and he, you know, he doesn't think that the buyouts are a hindrance at all. He just says, we're a better team. Um, so I love how blunt he is. Um, you know, he had to make that move. Um, and they're navigating it to the best they can with the cap space that is in front of them. Um, and, I think they're doing a pretty good job of that so far. Um, yeah, we'll see. Uh, we'll see how this trade deadline goes. Um, you know, I, I think there's uh, like we we talked about. It's such a weird year that there's so many teams that are still in this race um, that yeah. uh, you know there could be a lot more movement than we've ever seen uh, before because uh, you know there's going to be a ton ton of buyers out there um, and teams aren't. Uh, giving up as, as easily. Um, so, um, yeah, these GMs are probably already on the phones trying desperately. Um, and yeah, we'll see, see what happens. Well, and that's why I got to the Bo Horvat route for a center, because you look at all these teams that are clearly out of it, Arizona, Chicago, Mm -hmm. Anaheim, San Jose, (laughs) you look at those teams and there's not like a clear cut top six center on those teams where you'd be like, Oh, absolutely. That's, that's affordable guy. either yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so it's like, well, if the market looks like that, if and we talked about Max Domi a few weeks ago, just mm-hmm. as a potential option, but if you're going to pony up to get Max Domi, why not just pony up to get Bo Horvat? Yeah, I mean, it's probably going to cost the you know same uh, first round draft pick. Probably these teams, that's what they're looking for. So, um, you know, uh, I don't know. You know, you might Bo might just be a rental, but uh, be heck of a heck of a rental for for a playoff run. Um, you know, he's he's had an amazing season. He's looking to cash in, and he saw what JT Miller got, and he wants more than that. So it's that's that's going to be a heck of a contract to follow for sure. I, I just want to go on record by saying, and I know it's probably due to the type of season that Vancouver is having, but uh, it does seem as though a little bit of a bullet dodge by not going after JT Miller, who just seems like he is having a miserable time in Vancouver right now. Yeah, I mean, we saw, what, a couple weeks ago or last last week where he uh, uh, was just screaming at his goalie, Delia, to – um, to get off uh, the ice for an extra attacker. And he just, that was just bad vibes and just slamming his stick. Um, you know, it, everything just seems to be just in rough shape there. Um, the team is investigating how they handled an injury <laughs> uh, with, with Tanner Pearson. Uh, you have to look into that story, Seth. It's just so bizarre, um, you know, that a team has to investigate their own medical staff, you know, how they handled an injury you know, that, that team is diseased when uh, that is happening. Um, poor Bruce, it seems like oh. the end of the run is going to happen here soon. And yeah. a lot of rumors that uh, Rick Tockett from TNT might uh, might take over for him. So, you know, he's a heck of a coach. He's a, you know, he's a guy that can turn things around. He thought he was going to get the Kraken job. Um, and, you know, then they pulled a huge surprise and hired Dave Axtell. So, <laughs> and, and that's starting to work out. Uh, who would have yeah. ever thought with the Martin Jones, Philip uh, Krupauer goalie tandem. It's it, it just mind boggling. Um, you know, and that's why this, uh, this season's been just so, so crazy. So you're telling me that the Canucks are going to say no to Mike. Yo, just <laughs> say no to Mike. Yo. Yes. No, no, uh, no interim tag for, for Mr. Yo, for sure. Um, before we take a look at the upcoming schedule, I did want to take a look at the Kevin Weeks tweet that was making the rounds as everybody in the state of Minnesota <laughs> was trying to pick themselves up off the living room floor and um, just try to kind of regroup after the uh, the Vikings lost to the Giants. Uh, here's the tweet. Well, that's why, because it came basically at midnight. (laughs) Keep an eye on. 
I'm told the Minnesota Wild and Matt Boldy are making some ground on a potential new contract. The situation remains fluid. And Michael Russo had mentioned this um, within the last week, is that the Wild and Boldy had uh, begun the process of trying to get something ironed out. So I don't know if this is new info. Maybe means that the process has started to move a little bit, but that's a good sign because that is arguably your biggest contract situation that needs to be resolved when we hit the off season. Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, this is the guy that, uh, you know, the team expects to, um, you know, take over that production for, you know, Kevin Fiala, who's having, you know, an, an unbelievable season with the Kings after that trade. Um, good for Kevin, but, uh, yeah, it's time for Boldy um, to get that bridge deal, um, you know, and, you know, if he produces uh, on this next deal, then he should really cash in. Um, and, you know, I think it's good for him to kind of take that bridge deal um, and, you know, we'll see where things are at after, uh, you know, Zuccarello's contract, uh, you know, runs out and uh, these buyouts uh, start to, <laughs> to to go away and they can, you know, give guys – longer uh longer contracts or dollar amount um and uh yeah it'd be sure nice to i'm sure it's been really stressful for him uh you look at teams all over the place that are having having tough times uh signing or you know giving extensions to their to their own uh you know you know players uh you look at boston with poster knock uh every time they don't uh come to agreement the price goes up because he keeps scoring so uh, you know, hopefully they can do that with Boldy because, you know, if he goes on a run, you know, that, that price is going up, you know, his agents are, are watching, uh, you know, and seeing what other, what other players are getting and what the market's, uh, you know, offering. Um, and so, yeah, hopefully they can, can get it done here in the next couple of days. That would just be so huge uh, for the morale of the team too, I think. It'd, it'd be wonderful. And if it is a deal that can get us through the next, um, couple of years, after this year, and then you've got a full allocation of money to spend, then you can give Caprizov an extension. You can give Boldy a nice big deal. You've got the money to do everything that you had wanted to do. So we'll keep an eye on it, and mm -hmm. uh, we'll see what happens as the Wilds uh, are out on the road here for the next four games. It's a full week road trip and so we won't cover all of them yet but uh, we will take a look at the three biggest on the front end of this uh, daunting east coast road trip as we finish today's episode of lockdown wild after this today's episode brought to you by betonline.net they're your number one source for sports betting info plus stats news and analysis you can get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there. From the NFL playoffs to college basketball to the NBA to the NHL, they've got it all at betonline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can even find those at BetOnline as well. They are always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info. So head to their website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action at BetOnline where the game starts. Final segment of today's episode of Lockdown Wild. Once again, thanks for making Lockdown Wild your first listen each and every day. For listen number two, make sure you check out the Lockdown NHL Prospects podcast to get a good, great intel on the top prospects for the 2023 NHL draft, free and available wherever you listen your podcasts finishing up today's episode with alex micheletti and uh, the schedule for the wilds daunting over the next four games it all starts with kirill kaprizov getting the chance to take on his idol mr alex ovechkin and a game between uh, a couple of teams that don't play all that often the washington capitals are first up and anytime i am reminded of the washington capitals I, of course, think back to that just bizarre empty net goal <laughs> that uh, Off the wall. <laughs> scored on themselves that led to the Wild uh, winning that game. But interesting, too, in this one, and I don't know if he'll start. I guess we'll find out. 
Uh, Darcy Kemper <laughs> in net now for the Capitals, and he has had some decent success, to say the least, against the Minnesota Wild. And so you got that angle, you got the Ovechkin angle. You also have the fact that Nicholas Backstrom has uh, returned to action. So it's a Washington team that is definitely on the up and up as opposed to kind of the flatliner that we saw earlier. Yeah, everybody thought they were going to take a step back um, just be based on the Backstrom and Wilson injuries. Uh, you know, Wilson tore his ACL um, and he's back too. Um, so, um, you know, he's <laughs> he's got a huge history with Ryan Reeves too. So that is going to be a dandy to see if they uh, drop the gloves depending on how the – you know how the game is the game flow is going because you know sometimes you know fights don't you know um there really isn't an opportunity to fight but you know if the game gets out of hand watch out for those two to maybe throw throw down um you know even if darcy kemper doesn't start um the backup is charlie lindgren who's from minnesota st cloud uh goaltender so um yeah that you know another another just big big storyline um and, you know, I, I've talked about it a lot on Twitter, too. Um, you know, uh, Kirill likes to be the top Russian out there when he's facing off against uh, some other top Russians. And you mentioned that's, you know, Ovi is his, uh, his idol. Um, and so, you know, they have Dmitry or- Orlov, too. Um, so, yeah, it'll be be fun fun to see Kirill. Um, and, yeah, the games against the Capitals are always entertaining with uh, when they m- match up against the Wild, for sure. So then to encore that you get the Carolina Hurricanes on the road as well. And Carolina is just continuing to be a wagon out east. And it is interesting because, as well, we remember the success that the Wild had against the Eastern Conference last year. Just just torched (laughs) the Eastern Conference. And uh, not necessarily the same success so far. But they did beat the Hurricanes earlier this season, and so a chance to do it again, but this is probably going to be the toughest game of the road trip. Yeah, I mean, they're getting Freddie Anderson back, um, so we'll see if he starts against the Wild or not. Um, And they just got Max Pacioretty back, too, who has just always been a Wild destroyer. Um, That was an unbelievable trade because... Vegas didn't they, they didn't get anything back they just said here you go just because they were in cap uh, misery um and you know they were able to get Brent Burns too at a discount um so you know those are just two guys that have been wild destroyers and um you know <laughs> um they're so much fun to watch even though they're getting up there in age um and uh, you know they that team we'll see if they make the next step they're, they're they seem like a team that's like on the brink of getting to the stanley cup but they just mm-hmm. haven't figured it all out um so that's going to be a heck of a challenge uh but uh like you mentioned too the um the wild have, have played this uh canes team very well um it's a tough tough building to win in though so we'll, we'll see and then the final game that we get a chance to talk about this week is the other team in which made the big trade of the offseason who is kind of flatlining just like the Calgary Flames, that being the Florida Panthers, as you saw that huge trade between the two, and neither team has really taken off so far this year. The Panthers have been mired right around 500. They're 20, 20, and 4, in fact. So you literally could dissect them right down the middle, and they are even 500. But... It doesn't really matter because uh, we've seen them play the Wild incredibly tough over the last couple of years, even last year. So that is another tough game on the road for the Wild to contend with. Yeah, I mean, they, (laughs) the uh, the, uh, Panthers have some great centers. Um, You know, Barkoff is is one of the best. Uh, You know, he's Jewel Erickson Eck times 10. Um, You know, he... He's one of the best two ways uh, centers in, in the league for sure. Um, now their goaltending has really held them back. Um, you know, Ser- Sergei Bobrovsky uh, hasn't been great, and Spencer Knight has been giving up a ton of goals. Now, you know, it seems like, uh, you know, Andrew Burnett was the scapegoat, but, you know, it's been worse with Paul Maurice. So you feel bad for Bruno. Um, and that Panthers decor is not great. You know, they, they had to, you know, trade um, – 
uh, Mackenzie Weger away to, um, you know, to Calgary to get, you know, Kachuk. Um, but, you know, their decor got a lot worse when they made that tr- trade. You know, they have Mark Stahl in their top four, and it's just, it's not great. Other than Aaron Ekblad, um, you know, it's, you know, just a lot of average to really poor defensive Radko Gudis, like gross. Um, so, um, yeah, and uh, those uh, those Wild Panthers games are always super entertaining. Uh, you know, they they really miss a guy uh, like Anthony Duclair, too, um, who tore his Achilles like uh, – patch already did and they're hoping to get him back soon but you know that that injury is so tough to come back from we see it in other sports where yeah. guys are never the same uh hockey it's a little bit different um you know because patch already came back quicker than than everybody thought um but uh yeah that's that's a guy they definitely miss and um yeah it's it's it, that should be an interesting spot you just never know how big the crowd is going to be uh, down there in sunrise um too but um you know that team you know, uh, has started to, you know, to get better over the years. Um, and uh, it's all, it all comes down to their goaltending and, you know, they can't really get rid of that Bobrovsky contract. Um, so um, that that's tough. And in the coaching change, like we talked about uh, Paul Maurice, you know, it was a disaster at the end with the, with the jets where he just basically quit on that team. <laughs> he just said, I'm done, which was a bizarre move. Um, you know, the, the, the organization didn't, didn't say anything it was all him and then he goes to the panthers and they get a lot worse so yeah it's too bad for andrew Burnett. well and the crazy thing too is i'm looking at the numbers and uh ekblad is a minus 18 on the season and he is far and away their second well third i guess third leading defenseman by minutes played Minus 18 is like a black hole. He's too good of a player for that to happen, too. Mm. It's just, you know, he has no no D partners. Um, you know, the, and like I said, you know, the goaltending has been been god awful. You know, you can't can't win a lot of games when you're giving up, you know, five, six goals a game. No, you cannot. No, it's unless you're uh, yeah. scoring like seven goals per right. game. And they're not as good offensively, you know, losing a guy like Hubadro was was just he was so good with that, with that team and fitting in with a guy like Barkov. And so, uh, but you have to give up a lot to get a guy like Kachuk. Um, and so uh, we've seen that for sure. Well, it'll be interesting to see how the wild handled this, uh, this week, because it's a lot of East coast games, very tough opponents, early games. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's the other thing too, is I, I love that as opposed to the flip side, <laughs> where it's like, Hey, you've got eight Pacific coast games, uh, West coast games in a row. And so everything's going to start at nine 30 or later. Yeah. It's tough on the body and <laughs> got to get the coffee and, and caffeine going for, for those games for sure. Too much of that, uh, two years ago. So <laughs> let's not do it again, but no. we'll see what happens. And, uh, we will of course break it down for you next week. And, uh, that is going to do it for tonight's episode of locked on wild. So now that your first listen of the day is done, again, make sure you check out the Locked On NHL podcast to get the full lowdown on everything going on throughout the NHL. Also, if you're curious, make sure you check out Locked On Vikings as well to get uh, a recap of yesterday's game. Uh, We're all kind of stinging here in uh, Minnesota, I'm sure, after that one. So make sure that uh, you check out what Luke Braun has to say about what happened uh, against the Giants yesterday. You can subscribe to all of your favorite Locked On Sports Minnesota podcasts available everywhere that we are, on YouTube, on your favorite podcast platforms, on social media. You can find us on Amazon Music, on TikTok, everywhere you could possibly find Locked On Wild. We are there. So make sure that you follow along as we keep you up to date with new episodes every Monday through Friday as part of the Lockdown Sports Podcast Network.